Okay, we're on question one. Question one of the five and a half questions. Question one is, what are your strengths? What are your strengths? Strengths are your dominant thinking, feeling, and doing patterns that come naturally for you. These include talents, knowledge, and skills. Now, if it comes naturally to you, that's a strength. What's the difference between a strength and a skill? A skill can be learned. A skill can be learned, but a strength is inherent. It's a gift. It's a gift to us. We have to recognize that these are gifts that we have been given by the, by the, the creator of us. And that is a really cool thing when you start to think about it. Now, let me illustrate the difference between a skill and a strength. My son, uh, Joe, is he picks up a language like that. I mean, he goes to Italy, he comes back, he's talking Italian. You know, he, he, he goes to, uh, you know, uh, uh, Ireland, or, I'm sorry, Scotland, and he comes back talking Scottish. And that's not true because it's the same language. Uh, but he speaks Spanish and he teaches himself all these things. He picks it up naturally. Now, it could be a skill if we want to learn it. But if it's easy to us, it's a strength. So a skill is something that we can learn. I can learn how to use a buzzsaw. I actually haven't done that, but I, I could do that if I wanted to. Will I ever be a master at it? No, because it's not a passion of mine. I'll never do that. But a strength is something inherent. It's something that directs us. We get excited. We get charged up about this. And, and a lot of times we go through our daily life and we're experiencing and exuding our strength without even knowing it's a strength. It's not until somebody stops and says, you know, that you're really good at that. That's a great strength you have. And let me tell you something. When you feed your strength, it grows stronger. What you feed will grow. What you feed will grow. Now, let me ask you a question. Would you want to feed something that's, that's not going to grow as fast? Or would you rather feed something that's going to blow up? Well, I don't know about you, but I like to blow up. That's what I want. That's what I, I want to do. James 1.17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above. Every good and perfect gift is from above. It's from God. Now, I want to give you the five fingers of strength for you to remember. Five fingers of strength. The thumb is the strongest appendage. It's your strong boy. The goal of the thumb is to simply point you to your strengths. It's to make you aware of what you have. You see, you're not going to find your strengths unless you actually go and look for them. You're not going to find them unless you go look for them. You need to go look for them in order for you to uncover them. The pointer finger. This is the finger that points in the right direction. Now it's saying, hey, now that you've found these strengths, I want you to develop them, and I want you to recognize by developing them, it's going to push you down this road. And then the middle finger. The middle finger is the longest finger. It's the finger that's stretched out past the other fingers. Why? Because when you recognize your strengths and recognize that if I put them into use and they, I point them forward, I need to now stretch myself and take risks. And if I could take risks knowing that I've been given this strength or strengths as a gift, God's going to be with me. So I'm going to trust in him. The ring finger it's a finger of commitment. And what this says is now that you understand all this, what do you have to give up in order to commit to building your strengths? And finally, the pinky, the smallest finger. What's the goal of this finger? Well, it's all about the little things, right? What can I do today to identify and put into action my strengths tomorrow? The little things, just taking little jumps. What can you do? The five fingers of strength. Now, I want to caution you. Any strength taken to an extreme becomes a weakness. Let me give you an example. Being aggressive. Aggressive is a great thing. I'm an aggressive individual. I'm, going to I'm a persistent individual. I, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to persevere no matter what. But if I don't recognize I can persevere, I can persist, I can be aggressive in a bad way. Do I have to paint that picture for you? The reality is, if you carry a strength too far, it will absolutely become a weakness. Juan's going to come and talk to us a little bit about how to identify strengths.
I was going to say, I've seen both sides of Joe's aggressiveness, so I can attest <laughs> it's been both a strength and a weakness. Here are some of the <laughs> personal strengths. Uh, things such as ambitious, uh, flexible, open-minded, uh, responsible, trustworthy. Uh, I know for me, my personal strength that has helped my career uh, move forward and, and be launched in the way it has been is I'm, I'm a really good listener. Um, what'd you say? Oh. Uh, unless you ask my wife of almost 25 years, you know, it's selective uh, listening. But it's, it's a strength of mine, so I can sit with people and literally listen to them for almost an hour telling me their life story and telling me how they either struggle or challenge with something or they're seeking uh, some type of success in some route. And so I have a keen uh, way of listening intently. It's a God-given gift. I can't take any credit for it. I just have that uh, personal strength. And so these are just some examples of what personal strengths look like. Um, there are really good tools out there and resources uh, for you to kind of navigate and see how to find your strengths. Strengths Finders is one of them. Also, uh, my, my strengths and weaknesses, uh, com is another really good tool. Here's the disc profile. This is a, a, a tool that I use and Joe uses also in his practice um, for specifically for a corporate is really, really good, but you can use it in any different um, setting. And basically what the DISC profile does, it's an assessment you take and then you answer the questions and then it draws up a report where it shows, you know, what your kind of dominant behavioral style can look like. So the D is for dominant. Would you guess which one Joe is? Yeah, he's a high D. He's a high D. The I is for influential or kind of like a coach. Um, I'm, a, I'm an I uh, naturally. The S is for someone that's steady, that's peaceful, that's slow paced. Um, my son it, it fits this one. He's very even keeled. Nothing phases him. You say, Jordan, fire. And he's like, OK, let me get my sneakers. Let me get my basketball, you know, <laughs> the essentials, you know. Uh, and then the C is the conscientious one. This is the numbers person. This is the one that wants to make sure they know what, where the exits are in a specific place. They're the ones that want to make sure things are asymmetrical and everything's lined up and everything's perfect. Some people are laughing because they're looking at those individuals in the room. So you can relate. And what this does is it gives you a way of understanding why you behave the way you behave. And can you imagine this dynamic in a, in a team setting, right? Where you understand who's who and then you can flow uh, very, very smoothly when you understand that about yourself and others. So this is a powerful tool that I recommend highly if you're looking to see what your strengths are. I'm talking to everybody in here right now. I don't care what age you are. What are you doing daily to grow? In other words, are you building your mind? Are you constructing the way that you think? Our whole life is a construction site. You may look at some, some, some company building some construction someplace, and you see it's, in, it's being built in the, in the making and all that. Well, your life is that way. Look at your life that way, too. Use everything that's going on in your life to build your mind. Jesus, he gives us his spirit, but he doesn't give us his mind. That's our responsibility. What are you doing daily to grow? What are you reading? What are you listening to? What are you watching? Who are you talking to? What are you writing? All of these questions that I just put forth in front of you can be used as building materials. So what are you doing daily to grow? It is the, the content in the context of these things in your heart and your mind that enable you to grow in your strengths. World-renowned author John Maxwell said, and I quote, your potential is not based on who you are now or what you did yesterday. 
It's based on what you are doing now. Or the person who you really are right now. Are you being that person right now? That will determine a better tomorrow. When someone tells you how great you are, remember something. It's a gift. You're not that amazing. <laughs> the problem is too many people think they are really, really, really great. But we don't recognize that it truly is a gift that we have to understand was given to us. And when we do that, it puts us in a, a state of humble, being humble and recognizing that this gift was not given to me for my benefit. It was actually given to me for everybody else's benefit. And I think when you put things in perspective like that, it really, it sets a tone for your life, doesn't it? Remember, we go in with the right attitude. What's the right attitude? The right attitude is understanding who we are, understanding that we're created by, by a creator, somebody who loved us, who formed us, and now putting it into play, everything that we are, everything that we learn, to advance somebody else. It's a gift. And, and a gift is something that we want to give to other people. I know that you know, my kids will, will ask me, what do, you, what, is, what do you want for Christmas? And my answer is always the same. I don't want anything. I have everything. And they get all ticked off. I would much rather give than receive. It's just an awesome feeling because I was a taker most of my life. But now I recognize the incredible blessing of giving the gift away. So we're going to close out the session now with a little bit of a clinical analysis. So Juan is going to take his little mastery, and he's going to kind of analyze everything we just talked about. So Juan? Yeah, welcome to my office. I tell people when I meet them, I even tell Jordan this, uh, I'm totally not clinically ana analyzing you right now. I'm not judging you right now. No. It's a natural thing, um, I guess, is a gift as well, where God gives us the ability to see. And I believe it's also part of my spiritual gift of discernment. And um, it's, it's truly an honor to serve people that way. Um, so as it relates to strengths, um, the key to this is once you realize what your strengths are, you are committed to really sharpening that tool. You're committed to not only making sure that um, you have these strengths and that you know what they are and that you're, better, you're getting better at them, but that you um, pursue the right type of work. You pursue relationships based on your strength. A lot of the uh, issues and the problems that um, people deal with in terms of, you know, whether they're having a breakdown, they're in a depressive state, or I'll give you an example, just a, a little tidbit. When we are so focused on the past, that can produce depression. When we are so hung up on the future, that can produce anxiety. So those are the two really big issues that uh, we deal with today, especially with specifically today, right? And so having your strengths, knowing your strengths, you can start to uh, categorize and say, okay, I know that I had struggles in my past, but they're in my past. I can use them, look at my rearview mirror as a point of reference that I can say, not only look where I am today, but look how far I've come, right? Looking at your rearview mirror, you can look at your failures and say, wow, what a loser. Or you can say, look how far I've come. And I have so much still to go. And, and get excited about that. That's what your strengths do. They give you uh, the, the passion to say, I have somewhere to go. Uh, and then the windshield is much bigger than the rearview mirror, right? Because it shows us, it, it depicts for us the fact that our future is, is greater than our past. Our past was necessary, but our future is greater. And so knowing your strengths keeps you focused, and what happens, your brain rewards you for that. And we'll get a little bit more into that as we continue this session. But I want you to keep in mind that as you know your strengths, your brain will reward you uh, and your mind will benefit from what your brain is rewarding. Now, I want to leave you hanging with that so that as we go forward, it's going to all make sense 
when you come back into my office, all right? Okay. Okay, as we end this session, you were all given a sheet, and it's for you to take notes. And what I'd like you to do is pull that out now, and I want you to simply do one thing. I want you to get, take two minutes, two minutes, and I want you to write in question one, what are your strengths? I'd like you to list the strengths that you believe you have. These are the strengths you believe you possess. Take two minutes.